In every contract, you have the fine print. On this episode, we're going to look at the fine print of the covenants, so stay with us. One of the most unique aspects about the Christian God of the Bible is that he has a contract with his people. We call it the Old and the New Covenants. These are contracts, and with all contracts, there's fine print. And on this episode, as we study the entire uh, subject of the covenants, we're going to look at the fine print. My name is Justin Kim. You're watching Inverse. In the studio, we have Sebastian, Callie, and Siku with us, and we're looking at the entire Bible and the character of God in the mm. entire Bible. So this is an expansive topic. It Absolutely. It's going to require a lot of reading, a <laughs> lot of talking, and a lot of praying, and a a lot of surrendering, and uh, we're so glad you decided to join us. So let's go into the Bible. We're going to go to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 8, verse uh, 7 through 12. And before we read Scripture, as we always do, uh, Sebastian, can you pray for us? Yes, let's pray. Our Father, we are grateful, Lord, for your willingness to be faithful to that which you promise. But also, Lord, we, we realize that some of these things can be difficult and challenging, and that's why we pray and are unwilling to lean on our own understanding. So please send your spirit now as we study and as we open scripture is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, before we read the actual fine print of, of this covenant that God has made with his people, uh, Siku, pick us up. What did we cover last week? It's been what, two weeks now since we started, or, or a week now, since we started this, this, this wonderful topic on the covenants. What is a covenant? And, and uh, help us out here. Okay, uh, <laughs> so I wasn't on last week, but... <laughs> but you were watching. So <laughs> yeah, but I always <laughs> watch. <Okay. laughs> so covenants are talking about um, this, uh, this agreement that God makes with his people. Mm -hmm. um, and God has made, this com made commitments to his people even before, um, you know, even before he, uh, sin came into the world. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we think about covenant and we think about, oh, Jesus died on the cross. Mm -hmm. But last week we covered that there's an everlasting covenant, you know, of a relationship that God has with his people. Mm -hmm. So it's like the everlasting covenant that is overarching, you know, from time memorial um, mm -hmm. that's based on the character of God. Mm -hmm. And then um, we talked about, you talked about um, the covenant of grace, which is an adaptation of, of the covenant, the, the everlasting covenant, a covenant that God made after sin comes into the world. Now it's an adaptation for the current situation that we're in, mm -hmm. um, which brings us back to, you know, he's trying to bring us back to our relationship with him initially before mm -hmm. sin comes into the world. And then throughout um, history, throughout biblical history, you see God making covenants with his people. You know, he makes a covenant with Adam, he makes a covenant with Noah, he makes a covenant with Abraham, and he goes and he makes covenants with, with different people throughout history. Um, and these covenants are actually just building upon each other on that, that covenant that he has made, that, that covenant of grace that God has made with his people. Mm -hmm. So there, the Bible talks about different covenants, but it's actually the same covenant. Mm -hmm. um, but understanding that there are, there are these kind of nuanced differences helps us to conceptualize what we're talking about when we approach scripture. Yeah, awesome, okay. awesome. That okay. was a great synopsis. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, Someone you don't even have to go out and watch the episode. You can just kind of listen, listen to that. But if you do want to watch the episode, you can go to <laughs> hopetv.org slash inverse and see last week's episode on the covenants. It was the beginning introductory episode. And also you can go to inversebible.org and you can download the online Bible study guide on the covenants. Now, when it comes to the covenants, it is a it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a heavy subject, yes, mm -hmm. and uh, a covenant is an agreement, as Siku mentioned, and it's kind of weird that God has an agreement with humanity. Yeah, right. this is something very unique. If, with all the gods out there, they, we have this one that yeah. says, hey, I want to have a, a particular relationship with you, mm -hmm. and there are fine, there's, there's some fine print. How many of you, when you sign something, that you read all the fine print? 100%. You do? All yes, the fine all print? of it. 
So you would have said like I have like rubbed the mortgage terms and with like all those pay pages you have. Before to I subscribe to an app, I read all the terms and conditions. The, the EULA. Dude, that's a lot. Really, all like, of it. I'm yep. into business. Like, <laughs> it's just hard for me not to do. Your it. That's why you're late to all the meetings because uh, you're reading all the EULA, all the licensing <laughs> agreements. Some of those are like 300 pages long. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I just I can't. I, I don't have the, I mean, some things are standard, you know, like, you know, mature and like where your indemnity and all those clauses are usually totally standardized. I know what those words mean. Uh -huh. Sorry. Yeah, yeah 100%. But different aspects of contracts are kind of standardized components, but you look for specific sections, right? right? So it's Very like, good. what happens if we get into a conflict? What happens if I don't pay? What happens if, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, your service crashes? But you'll see like apps will say, well, if you pay us and the app stops working, we're not going to refund you. Okay. And it's in the terms and conditions. And then people get shocked when they call and they're like, my thing's not working. Where's yeah. my refund? So oh, I'm tempted to like write a, set up a contract and have you sign it and see if you, <laughs> you find everything. Whether you're going to donate your firstborn child to me. <laughs> anyway, uh, and Callie, you don't, you don't read the fine print, yeah? You don't read the fine print. No. Not at all. So. You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> I'm not. Kelly, you I'm are not normal ashamed. like the rest of us. Yeah, I'm just not Sebastian. Uh, that's the only thing. But when it comes to the covenants, we need to read the fine print because yeah. rather than the nitty gritty and rather than like a legal situation where people are just trying to benefit and Correct. come out clean, mm -hmm. yeah. God is revealing more of his character. Mm -hmm. And the fine print isn't really that much fine print. It's just four yeah, points. I'll read it. Okay. All and right. Also keep in mind that with the fine print, you're, it's actually revealing the person's confidence in their ability to keep their part of the agreement yes. mm -hmm. and yours. Mm -hmm. So when they put put those things in the fine print, they're assuming your character and theirs. Mm -hmm. So it's really critical that you understand it just as, you know, we're going to do with the covenant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So on that note, Kelly, if you can read uh, this, <laughs> yes. this component. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 8, verse 7 through 12, please. Okay. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins, and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. This is an actual quote from Jeremiah. So you actually find this right. in the Old Testament and the New Testament. But we just chose this passage because it was, you know, we just, for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, it's the same exact <laughs> quote. Um, there is a lot there, but, uh, and, and I want to look at uh, some of this Old Covenant, New Covenant stuff, and First Covenant, Second Covenant. But let's actually look at what the, what the actual terms are first, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. So let's go to verse, verse 10, and then 10 through 12. There are four points that we see in, in this covenant that, that, that delineate what this contract is about. Mm -hmm. What's right. the first thing, without actually getting into all four, is there anything that just, po just pops out in general from those four? And we'll, we'll get into the four. But anything that pops out in general that you may see? Um, one thing that pops out for me is the emphasis on who is who is the the, the actor yes. in this covenant. Yes. Um, <laughs> God is saying, "I will, I yes. will, I will." And that yeah. that really strikes me because when you think about an agreement, it's like you do this, I'll do this. That's right. But here you see God saying, "I, I, I, I." Yeah, like spot on. And what? So this is a this is a contract really of what God's, God's doing, do. right? right. Yeah. And then our role is, well, we'll talk about that role later. <laughs> later. So um, let's, let's parse this out, uh, you guys. What are some points that you see there in 10 through 12, Sebastian? Well, one of the first things you see in verse 10 is he says, in this covenant that I'm going to make, he says, I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts. Uh -huh. And we know that when it comes to God, this idea of writing his law in the heart and leading to this process of sanctification which is a fancy word to say, setting you aside, mm -hmm. right, for this holy purpose and holy use. Mm -hmm. So God says, the first commitment I'm making to you is that I'm going to make you holy. I'm going to put the law, the right doings, the right principles in your heart, in your mind. Mm -hmm. And this is, in, this is a, 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 a constant prayer of any person who's ever grappled with evil, right, to think that, man, why do I love evil? Why do I love the things that bring me guilt and shame? Mm. And God is saying, my first covenant promise is, I'm going to write it in your heart, mm -hmm. which is something you can't do. This is supernatural. 
and this is going to be my doing on your behalf, mm -hmm. which makes you look at even if this was the only term of the covenant, that how could you not be, enter it? Like, that's awesome. enough to be like, where yeah. do I sign? Right, right, right on the dot. What, do you want to read the fine print? No, no, no. Just, <laughs> just let me sign, right? Be like Kelly, right? Just <laughs> sign and don't read it. That's right. But, that's right. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. <laughs> but this first promise that he's going to sanctify us, he's going to make us holy, and he's going to make it natural from the heart. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a critical component. I like that word that you use, make it natural. And, and that's what the Bible is saying, from the heart. Mm -hmm. uh, all these people were trying to do the works of the law with their hands or on the outside yep. or like as a burden. But here God is saying in the heart, I think today's language would be just to be real. With yes, it. Just, authentic. Just real, authentic. Yep. Like let me be godly and holy in a real, natural Way I don't know how mm -hmm. else to, but yeah. it's and that's something that I think we all yearn for. For Amen. Uh, or at least we should. <laughs> yeah, Siku. And I think it's it's awesome that the, one of the first terms that we're seeing here is that it has to do with God's law. Mm. And I know we're, we have a whole quarter to, to a whole season to go into this, but you know the 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 perception of what a new co the new covenant that God wants to do um, make with us and a lot of times it excludes the law but the first term that he's putting here is that it has everything to do with the law mm -hmm. but not the law as in so my covenant is that you shall do this and you shall do that right the covenant is that he wants to put his law in our hearts yes. so it's got everything to do with the law yes but the law written in our hearts that he writes in our hearts yes. so that we become like him yes. who is the lawgiver. Yeah, a be yeah. beautiful point. I mean, we didn't emphasize that sometimes we, this is, we need to disabuse our minds, especially within Christianity. Mm -hmm. We think all these laws are do not do, do not do, do not do, do not like all these, all right, well, yeah. I subscribe to a bunch of rules and that's my religion. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah. you're saying it's not that. Right, right. You're saying the Bible doesn't say. The Bible doesn't say. It's not secret right. theology, it's <laughs> biblical. Okay, very good, very good. So first is right writing the law in the minds and the hearts. I love that, mind mm -hmm. and the hearts. And you're saying it's sanctification in a real, natural, organic, non-GMO way. Okay. That's Very right. Okay. <laughs> well, All right. Um, any other, what, what's other other points in the, in the fine print that this, you see? The Kelly? second comes right after, just separated by the word and. Yep. In verse 10, it says, I will be their God mm -hmm. and they shall be my people. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a reconciling of a relationship. And even think about just the condition of the world. Yeah. Of We're in a very vulnerable position, but God's like, I will, I will be your God and you'll be my people. So it's also indicative of this kind of protection and this care. Mm -hmm. So it's not just like, I'll tell you what to do and I'll help you do it and then Good luck out there. Mm -hmm. But it's, I'll even like enclose you in me being your God and you being mm -hmm. my people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And consider, consider the fact that your, his, his first promise being, I'm going to sanctify you, right? I'm going to set you aside yeah. and I'm going to make you my people is also about an identity change, mm -hmm. right? In this covenant promise That's right. yeah. that God is like, I'm going to help you see yourself differently. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we may feel as if we don't belong, right? Or we're not fitting in. But God is saying, I'm going to give you a place, even on earth, mm -hmm. which obviously is going to let you know he's going to have a place in the future for you. But I think that's a profound covenant promise. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So far, terms and conditions seem really good. One and two are very positive. Stay with us as we look at three and four. Welcome back. We were actually debating during the break whether Sebastian re really read those details <laughs> of, of every contract that he, he reads. He and uh, yeah, well, leave a comment on our social media whether you think what, what Sebastian does. He doesn't. Uh, but let's read the details <laughs> of <laughs> this contract because this one yes. is very important. We established there are four, about four. The first we see that God makes it real. God sanctifies us and he's doing all the work too. There's a change of identity. He's our personal God and we are his people. And there's that going again, yep. and then uh, <laughs> some other conditions that you see there, Siku. Um, before we go to the oh, next okay. edition, I just want to comment on the sure. um, in verse 10 still, like that in link. In verse 10. In, in verse, verse. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. a new car. <laughs> 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 but in verse in verse ten, yep. um, that that connection between you know he's writing his laws on our hearts, and then we, we he's our God and we're his people. Yes, you know, and Isaiah tells us that you know God's arm is not short that it cannot reach us. But the problem is that sin has separated us from God, mm -hmm. and what God it's it's kind of like sin being the transgression of the law, sin being breaking the law. God is saying, I'm going to transform you so that you are in harmony with my law, mm -hmm. and you know. 
even when somebody says sorry and they change their ways, it doesn't mean that they're back in your good graces, that you accept them back into your life, you know? Mm -hmm. But here what God is saying is not only will I change you so that sin is no longer a barrier between us, but I will also receive you back to myself. Mm -hmm. So this reconciliation, it's not automatic just because, you know, now, you know, he's sanctified us, mm -hmm. but he says, I have sanctified you and I'm also going to receive you to myself. That means all the hurt that you've caused me in the mm. past, all of the pain, mm. like the forgiveness covers all of that and I'm taking you back to myself. And um, I think that's, that's a beautiful thing to do. It is beautiful, Amen. it is beautiful. I think while you were talking, I was thinking this, if you distill all of that in one word, it's the word change, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's become a political word. It's being politicized, and only human institutions can only do so much. Yes. Uh, human corporations can only do. Our human individual, as a human individual, can only do so much. Mm -hmm. But God is owning up to the ramifications of what humanity did. He's promising change. I mean, that's it's it's the it, beautiful is the the spot on word for that. How can you not want that kind of level of change in your life? Right. I mean, that's that's. that's and and in is. fact, that's what people are looking for. Mm. You know, uh, Justin, one of the, the other things that we see here that transitions from this second promise, mm -hmm. which is that we forget that it's not just we're going to be his people, but he's going to be our God. Mm -hmm. So to me, God is committing himself to also being a possession, mm -hmm. which leads into the next one where he says in verse 11, none of them shall teach his neighbor, none his brother, saying, know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of mm -hmm. them. So in this sense, there's a mission component mm. because it's not just that we're owned by God and we're like, oh, go be my minions in the world. Mm. But there's also a sense of he is ours, right? We own him as well. Mm. And that naturally leads us to want to spread other people to get to know our God. Mm -hmm. So this, this natural kind of ebbing and flowing that God sees this as a mutual relationship and sense of ownership and a certain jealousy, just like he's like, you're gonna be my people and I'm gonna be jealous over you and protect you. In the same sense, we got to be jealous over God's name. We have to be jealous over the fact that people misunderstand who God is. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, um, especially in our time, a lot of aggressive atheism, a lot of aggressive, you know, um, movements that are trying to undermine who God, the God of the Bible, the God of this covenant actually is. Mm -hmm. And the covenant reveals him as something completely different. Mm -hmm. I like how you said that this is, this is mission and, and God allows himself to be, uh, owned by, mm -hmm. by, by people. Uh, I, I really see a, pr a progression here that God promises change, you know, heart change, then, then there's, a, there's an identity change, yep. and then he grants him purpose. And these are things that, yeah. that our generation is really yearning for. We want change, we want identity, we want purpose. Yes. Uh, and and this, this, even though it's, it's, the, it's an old covenant manifested in new covenant from, from, th <laughs> from a, th a thousand years ago, right. these are modern day needs. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I would say even human needs that we, that we have. Yeah, and, awesome, awesome. And, and, and just on the um, sharing it with other people, I like that this goes from my relationship with you, you know, like so just me and God, the mm -hmm. two of us, mm -hmm. but it has a communal aspect to it. Okay. Right? So what do you mean by that? Uh, what I mean is he's talking about, I will be your God, um, they shall be my people. So, but when we think about this, I'll put my laws in your hearts. So you're thinking a, a personal experience with okay. God. You know, okay. he is doing this with me and then I'm becoming his people. Mm -hmm. But when he talks about they, they, none of them shall teach their neighbor um, because they, they shall know, all know me from the least to the greatest. Like there's a communal aspect of, of a knowledge of God, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Of a relationship with God. That's not just me and God, but he wants a community that has this kind of relationship yes. with him. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess, does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, I, so yeah. it's not an individual thing. And it's you're not just a- And it's just <coughs> me and the Lord on the mountaintop, or <laughs> we're just gonna do our own <laughs> thing. But it is, there's a co communitarian, there's a corporate uh, component mm -hmm. to and it. Think about, and think about the fact that we live in a time where it's hard for people to have any piece of information or knowledge that we all agree on, mm -hmm. right? When we talk about fake news and all these types of things, people are like, well, you, you have your own facts, your own truth, your own, you know, whatever. And God is like, we're gonna get to a place where the reality of God and the truth authenticity of who he is will be ubiquitous. Mm. We will all be at a place where I don't have to tell you, do you know this? Mm -hmm. There will be no need for news in terms of the character of God mm -hmm. and the person of God. Mm -hmm. And that is a powerful idea that to say, we can all come down on one level mm -hmm. and say, yeah, I don't have to tell you, Siku, know the Lord. Siku's like, I already know him. Mm -hmm. I already know him. You already, and that ability to coexist in that type of community 
-hmm. is powerful because mm -hmm. in the Marines, that's why the concept of basic training for any military branch is critical because no matter where I meet you or ever meet you or I only see you in the field, there's some things I know you already know how to do. Mm -hmm. There's some things I already know you understand and therefore it helps us move faster, accomplish missions better, even if we don't have a you know, personal relationship in the same mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. This is, this is very exciting. This is, we're, we're getting, <laughs> a, this is getting deep because not only do you see the terms and conditions, but these are the values that we're, we're distilling and, and, and these abstract values from God, yeah? Right. And you see purpose, mission, identity, and we're saying community is a big value uh, with God's covenant. Okay. Absolutely. Awesome, awesome. Anything else that you see there in that, in that passage? Uh, Kelly? Yeah, in verse 12, so the fourth, the fourth promise there, mm -hmm. the fourth term, as it were, mm -hmm. is, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins, and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Mm -hmm. And he just, God just goes above and beyond, because it's one thing just <laughs> to be merciful, and like, yeah, I won't hold it against you. Like, I appreciate that. that that's really nice of you. Thank you. Mm. But it's like, I will remember it no more. And for someone like God, who has an infinite memory, right? Yes. For him to say, I will remember it no more, that will not be counted against you. That will not be my consciousness towards you when I, when I see you. Mm. That is insane. Yes. <laughs> and so, again, it's just, going back to what Siku said earlier, of these are all just, it's almost just lofty promises upon promises from God. Mm -hmm. Because it's not like, I will remember them no more as long as you do these four to six religious activities. <laughs> I will remember no more as long as you merit it in this way each week. It's just, mm -hmm. I'll, if you just surrender <laughs> to these, to, to me, I will remember them no more and I will not count those things against you. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if I may, um, I, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but this reminds me of something we talked about in the previous season okay. in the book of Romans. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, where we're talking about, don't you know, be God being merciful to our unrighteousness and, you know, the, the term that comes to mind is justification, right? Mm -hmm. He's going to yes. justify us. And when he sees us just as if, we had never sinned, right? Mm. I'll remember these things no more. And ultimately this points to the sacrifice of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, so like this promise can be made because of what Christ does, what Christ has done, mm. you know, what Christ did on the cross. He can tell us that, you know, I can, I can wipe the slate clean because of, you know, the blood of the covenant, yes. because of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so I, so I'll say, I don't know if I'm allowed to do that. Oh, yes. I see Jesus in this. Mm -hmm. And think about the profundity of what you just said, Siku, because when we connect that to the cross and the text says in verse 12, the first word there is for, which is because. So why is it that no man's going to say to his brother, know the Lord and all shall know me because of how I'm going to get to the place mm -hmm. of forgiving your sins. Mm -hmm. So that means through the cross, through the sacrifice of Jesus and how he's able to remember our sins no more and be merciful to us is the very means by which he will be known mm. and all will know me, right? This is how you're gonna be, you don't have to go to your brother because he will understand what it's like to be forgiven mm. and to know the mercy of God, to know that God performs a miracle on his own mind. And it's like, well, I'm not gonna remember. How does an infinite mind not remember? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. Like God is literally limiting his own abilities for the sake of an intense and deep personal relationship with you. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm going to do something to myself so that you and I can coexist. And that's going to be in response to what Christ has done on the cross. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, that's just like, I mean, that wants you, you know, get up and jump and shout hallelujah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, like you like, said, wow. at, at each term and condition, it's like not, he's not even finished with the contract. You're like, where do I sign? Yes. <laughs> Number two, where do I sign? Number three, where do I sign? But I want to move to a very interesting. Let's move on to the next uh, verse, which actually parallels verse seven. But let's go to verse 13, mm -hmm. chapter eight, verse 13. And the Bible says in that he says a new covenant. He has made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. And I compare that mm -hmm. with verse 7 that we read earlier today. And just kind of, it's, it's a similar, but verse 7. And the Bible says, For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. 
So let me ask you, there are two covenants here, okay? We kind of touched on it last week, and we have the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, and here the Bible is very clear. The old one was, there's fault with it. Correct. Uh, it's, it's obsolete, and this new one is like so awesome. <laughs> uh, but we actually find elements of this in the, so uh, parse this out. How, what is this first one, why is, it, why is it bad? Kelly. Yeah, so we can actually just follow the word fault into verse eight. Okay. So it, well, going, look Looking at verse 7 for a second, so if it had been faultless, then we wouldn't have to get a second. So where did the fault come from? What was what was the issue? Okay. And verse 8, because finding fault with them, mm. so it doesn't say with the covenant or with the contract or with the methodology, but with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, which I will make a new covenant. And then going down to verse 9, mm -hmm. it says, Because they did not continue in my covenant, and mm -hmm. I disregarded them. Mm -hmm. So the issue with the first covenant wasn't the covenant itself. It wasn't the way God explained it or the methodology. It was with the response to it. Mm -hmm. So all the fault, all the wrongness was simply in the response to God and what God had set up. So think about the profundity of this difference between the historical covenant and the experiential walk in that covenant. Mm -hmm. When God says they didn't continue, well, explain to me what list of activities would they have failed? Mm -hmm. And that would tell you that they failed to allow God to do the things he was covenanting to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that means that if they weren't allowing God to do it, then who was the person that they were looking to to do it? And more than likely, we see he found fault with the people, mm -hmm. which means they were trying to do it in their own ability. Mm -hmm. We're going to make ourselves your people, and you're going to be our God in our own ability because we're descendants mm -hmm. of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Or we're going to you know, put the law in our hearts and memorize it and do all these things. No. I'm going to do that. I'm going to make you my people. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that's going to help you to know, and I'm the one that's going to be merciful to your sins. There is no activity that you can do that's going to allow that so to that, happen. So that old covenant response yes. was these four conditions, but they were doing it themselves. Yes. Yeah. Let me put the, the, the law in my own mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let, me make, let me be God's people by myself. Let me, uh, what was it? I'm going to let all people, the whole world know by myself, and I'm going to justify my own sin. Think about how ridiculous that is, right? You got a contract with a contractor to build your deck, but you're going to build the deck, mm -hmm. but you don't know how to build deck. Yeah. How ridiculous is that? <laughs> I don't know about you, but my response naturally is, I can't do this by myself. I need for you to do it for me. I need you to sanctify me. I need you to justify me. I need you to give me purpose and a mission. And I need to reconcile me to you and be your people and you my God. That is my sincere prayer. We're looking at the covenants. This is our sincere prayer for my group here. And hopefully that's yours. Hopefully it's been a very fruitful study in the covenants. Join us next week as we look at more elements of the old and the new and the real everlasting covenant. God bless you.